My guest today is J.J. Carroll, author, retired Southern U.S. border agent, and co-host of the Unrestricted Invasion podcast with Brian O'Shea. We discuss the emasculation of Western men, the weakening of Western society that's occurred as a result, and how this has allowed millions of illegal immigrants to enter our countries and take advantage. J.J. is a sobering voice amongst the chaos of our declining nations, and his perspective is one that's shared by millions of citizens. The only difference is, he has the courage to say what most are afraid to vocalize. Stay tuned. JJ Carroll, my brother, it is so good to see you again, man. And you wore the suit. I've been dogging this guy forever. He wears a suit for everybody else. He's talking to Fox News. He's talking to America, uh, Real America's Voice. He's talking to all these really important people wearing a suit. Then he comes on my show and he's just in a fucking t-shirt. But here he is, JJ Carroll, my brother. You're wearing the suit. Hey. I love it. I feel underdressed yeah. now, but thank you for being oh, no, here. Man. It's great. I was I was literally taking my jacket off. I was going to throw my black t-shirt on. I went. What? Wait. I'm, I owe it. <laughs> I owe it to him. So <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm, dre I'm ready. It's the new me. I, I'm getting bigger. I, I, I'm getting more important. And I'm just squeezing about five minutes of time for you. <laughs> JJ, you've always been important, my friend. People yeah, are just starting to recognize it. So, um, yeah, you know, it's funny. I was going to wear a tuxedo. I was thinking about renting a tuxedo. But then I was like, <laughs> if I'm wearing a tuxedo and JJ's in a T-shirt, nobody's going to get the joke. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we were talking a bit before we started recording and I, and I think this is a good place for us to begin because, um, well, I, I was telling you that there's a good chance that I may have to leave the country, uh, in the, in the future. And the reason for that being is because of course, Canada has it's tabled its online harms bill, uh, which designates hate speech as a, as a crime punishable by up to a life term in prison. And <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So somebody arbitrarily decides what's hate speech and it's up to life in prison? That's it. Yeah. And and the worst part about it is that it's retroactive. So they can go back in time, find something that I've said and designated as hate speech, put me before a kangaroo court or what in Canada would be the human rights tribunal, find me guilty. And I mean... The way I see this actually playing out is I don't think they'll actually deliver many verdicts. What I think they'll do is they'll they'll introduce this law. They'll clog up the system to such a degree that people like me will sit in prison for my natural life without ever reaching a court date because the, the system will be so backlogged. And I think that's the real ambition is is not to convict people of hate crimes and send them to prison. It's to stick them in a box hold them there and just just forever without ever really seeing a day in court. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of my reality. Like the, the scary thing is, is that the bigger my writing gets, the bigger this podcast gets, the more danger I'm in. Right. Isn't that horrible? I mean, think about think about the discussion that we're just starting into, that you're afraid to speak openly. Mm -hmm. that, that's frightening. And then you say, well, you, America. Oh, we can. We always can run to America. I'm, I'm. I'm here also telling the world, you can't run to America. Mm -hmm. You got people in from January 6th that have been in prison for years, and our Constitution says you have to have a speedy trial, and they're not. They're not even getting bail. All the major cities have no bail. They're releasing child rapists, murderers with no bail. Just. No, they're not requiring any bond or bail. They're just releasing them. But people that are praying at abortion clinics, grandmothers, people that were just wandering through the Capitol as the Capitol police were waving them through, they're in jail still. Yeah. And it's a and you don't think that it has a profound impact on the average citizen to shut them up. Oh, absolutely it does. It just shuts people down. I was just on an interview prior to coming on here. And the gentleman asked me, why did you write your book? Why are you speaking the way you are? You're putting yourself in danger. And as I'm like you, you and I kind of started at the same time. So we're growing our, our audience and our voice. And because you and I are speaking truth, there, when someone speaks truth, there's a, there's a certain ring to it. Martin Luther King, George Washington, uh, Donald Trump. 
people that speak truth, people, God built in us this, this ability to, to understand BS and the truth, and we are drawn to truth. So you're seeing our reach rise. But if I'm honest with you, I will tell you that I am, I have some anxiety. Uh, before I came on your show and the one I just did, and the one I'm going to do after this with Brian O'Shea, my co-host, I have to, I have to tell myself, I have to remind myself, you can't be a coward. <laughs> you can't live your life thinking, okay, is the hammer going to fall? When's the hammer going to fall? What's this going to do to my family? Because when you look back to the, I'm not in any way saying that I'm like the, my founding fathers. Those, those men were geniuses and they were courageous. I, I would like to think that I would behave like that. But those men that created the United States of America, many of them that signed the Declaration of Independence died like early deaths by, by the Brits or mm -hmm. they were penniless, bankrupt. Literally, we're talking high level elites that had money and land and wealth were penniless all for America, what they believed in. So if those men can do that, you and I, or me in America, I can get on and do a freaking interview. Mm -hmm. And then I need to have the strong will and the belief that God's going to take care of me in the face of the giant, corrupt, evil machine, which is the government. And if you don't think, Jason, that the machine is big enough to crush you, you're you're a fool, and they will because you are nothing to them, just like I'm nothing. They will squash us because they're in their mind, because they don't believe in God, they don't believe in any higher power. What is the end game? What do I need to achieve that? Whatever that is, I'm going to dis destroy everything in its wake to get it. So when you tell me you're thinking of having a move, I'm, when you say that to me, it's just like, God, how did we get here? Like, mm -hmm. this didn't happen overnight, Jason. This was a slippery slope. We, you don't get tyranny like that. It takes time. But history has proven and shown the blueprint. Canada's just ahead of us, dude. You got Trudeau. Dear God, man. That yeah. beta male is dominating your country. Yeah. And where, I, my fine, I'd like to ask you this question. Because let me, let me do a, just give me one minute to, to lay this question before you. This was about three or five years ago. I'm watching Germany brought in. I remember they brought in all those Middle Eastern men, single adult military age men, millions. And they began in the, the water. In, in Germany, they have these giant uh, pools, right? And the women uh, swim and bathe topless, okay? Those men were coming in and raping and sexually assaulting all the women. And the Germans' response was, well, you need to cover yourself and... You don't need to swim when they're swimming. Like you, you need to change your whole life. And one of the young women that was being interviewed, she was in her 20s. She said a very important question. And it was very simple. Where are all the German men? Yeah. Meaning, why is our German men allowing their women to be devastated, destroyed by foreign invaders? Mm -hmm. And my question to you, and I asked this out loud, I was thinking about this yesterday. Where are the men in America? Where are the men in Canada? That where are they? Why are why are there not a million of you with a million podcasts just beating the drum? Mm -hmm. Where are they? They're well, they're emasculated, and they're emasculated because they've over the years been told that they're wrong or they're bad for being who they are. And so, you know, it's so funny, man, because I, this, I, this just happened to me the other day. So um, I run five miles three times a week. I box twice a week. Um, I, on my off days, I, I knock out 200 push-ups, 200 sit-ups, 200 Russian twists, 200 uh, leg raises, 200 uh, toe, uh, heel taps. Like I, I make sure I stay physically in shape, partly because it's part of my life, part of my routine. Mm -hmm. But also because I know that, you know, if somebody kicks in my door, you know, one night and likeliness of that happening is slim. I'm in a small prairie town in Alberta, Canada. But if that were to ever happen, I'm not going to be the guy who hides in his fucking closet and calls 911 while my wife and children are being are being violated. Right. 
You come in my house, gun or no gun, I will fucking destroy you. And that's my mentality, right? As a man, I, I think as a man, that's how we that's that's how we have to think. But I think what's happened is that life has gotten really convenient. And men don't have to think about that stuff anymore. They're actually told they shouldn't, that they should be relying on the state for that level of protection. But the truth is, when you are faced with those scenarios, which, you know, I'm 41 years old. And over the course of the last 15 years, I ha I've had maybe a handful of scenarios where I've been faced with potential physical violence. But in every one of those circumstances, I felt totally cool and calm and relaxed. I didn't need the state for fucking anything because I can handle myself. I've boxed for 30 years. I did jujitsu and, and, and wrestling and Muay Thai for 10 of those 30. Like I'm pretty covered in terms of hand to hand combat. If somebody wants to come at me, I can handle it. But that's a but that but that's a choice that I made for myself because I know the state isn't going to help me when I yeah. need help. Right. And so I think what's happened is, is that these men, especially during the since 2000, so during these last nearly 25 years, have been slowly conditioned to believe that weakness is strength, to quote Orwell. Right. Like mm -hmm. that being weak is OK. And, and especially now with the cultural Marxism that we see in Western society, we're being told that weak, that weakness is a virtue. Right. That to be a victim is virtuous. And it's the greatest lie ever. And it's and it's designed to keep people docile. It's designed to turn people into victims. So it's like I was on my run the other day and I, and I was running past this this dude who was big, fat, pot belly, stick, thin arms, walking with his wife who, you know, you could just see the dynamic between them. The chemistry is no longer there. She's not attracted to him. And I just felt fucking bad for him. But I but I encounter these men all the time. And I'm sure you do, too. Yes. Right. And you just you just look at these guys and you're like, how do you respect yourself? How does your wife respect you? How do your kids respect you? Like you're a fucking nothing. You're a nobody. And if something were to happen tomorrow, which as time goes on, it looks like we're getting closer and closer to something actually happening. Who the fuck are you going to be and where are you going to be? Because if it like, look, I'll tell you this, man. If if for whatever reasons something were to happen tomorrow where we needed to pick up arms and defend ourselves, I'm coming to find fucking JJ Carroll, right? You're a guy I want to stand next to because I know that we can trust each other. Mm -hmm. But 95% of these dudes, I wouldn't stand next to them. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be caught in dead on the same side with them because I know that they're just going to lay down and die. I know they're not going to fight. And I think that speaks to a larger issue, right? Is that... We are in a lay down and die sort of mentality here, right? Canada and the United States. And that's why what's happening is happening because we're just letting it. And yeah. to go back to the original topic of conversation, I think the reason why I'm, I'm not afraid to speak out, the reason why I have the courage, and I think the reason why you have a courage too, is because we're men. That masculinity lives in us, right? Like mm -hmm. we're not, and, and it's not to say that women don't have the same courage, but I'm saying in terms of being men, you can't see what's happening in front of you and not speak out and still consider yourself a man. That's just my opinion. No, you're absolutely right. Because this is what God built in us. Yeah. God didn't build women to be masculine. God built women to be compassionate and kind and supportive. Now, do you need a wife that's going to pick up the weapon too and, and fight with you? Yes, that, that could happen. It happened. This isn't this isn't fantasy, right? We don't you don't you and I don't have to go back in, in like two thousand years ago and talk about women in war. Dude, this was women were fighting with us side by side in America yeah. for, for our whole history. That's right. They're, but the idea that then the question is where are the men i have these conversations with my son my son's going to be 13 in a couple months and he and i have these discussions about traitors and we were watching the old um red dawn that got remade okay mm -hmm. and one of the guys turned coat and went with the, the enemy that was in and my son made me pause the movie and he said dad why would anyone do that and we had we had to pause for like 30 minutes we had to have this long discussion Look, son, there are cowards that walk among us and they would rather give up all of their dignity, all of their soul to stay alive. And I said, your father and men like me would rather die than bend a knee mm -hmm. because, son, let's say that guy lives. 
and he lives a long life. His life is going to be miserable because in his soul, he knows he's a coward. And for a man to know he's a coward, you'd rather kill me. I don't want that feeling. Yeah. I want, I'm never bending a knee. Yeah. Damn it, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And my son's going to see his father not bend a knee. And that's important because if my son, in this, in this world we live in, dude, if my son has an average determination, an average persistence, an average intellect, he will be highly successful mm -hmm. as an average because his, his peers are being taught that they don't, they, they're women. They can be a woman. They can have a tampon. That's how in, they can have babies. So the, the competition for my son thinks they can have babies. Yeah. So my son average, and he is not average. He's going to be, he is high intellect, high physical strength, high man, masculinity. He is everything that they hate. So I have an even a bigger obligation for my blonde hair, blue eyed, very light skinned boy that's going to be a man to make him a man because he is the embodiment of evil by our, our enemy. Mm -hmm. So I, and I have these conversations, look, man, I have conversations with my son that I should never have, should never. There are times and I'm, I'm, this is how I feel. I feel like I am a black sharecropper in the fifties talking to his son, son, God gave you that skin color. Don't you ever be in, don't you ever be ashamed or apologize for who you are. God created you special. Don't let anyone tell you. I feel like I'm a black man telling my black son during, during the, the segregated South time that you, that God created you special and don't ever let anybody demean you. I'm having yeah. those conversations with my son. Do you see how screwed up and upside down or well, we're not even Orwellian anymore. We're beyond Orwellian yeah. times, but I'm, Dude, I'm I'm aligned with you. I want to know where the hell are all the men. However, when you go through history, only a very very small percentage of men fight yep. and and control the world. Very small. So I don't need 20 million of me and you and Brian O'Shea. We just need a few of us and we'll take care of it. Because who is our enemy, Jason? The guy sitting at Starbucks with a man bun, with the skinny arms and a big fat belly, talking about poetry and feelings and about how men can have babies. Seriously, this is our enemy. They've never been punched in the face before. Yeah. And you say, well, that's, that's barbaric. No, that, that's important to be punched in the face. Because here's the deal. In America, we have 45 million illegal aliens in America now. Let's take a subset of them a million from Haiti. By the time those Haitians are reach 18, they probably have several murders under their belt. They've raped a half a dozen women. They're coming into America with the weapon of choice as a machete. You're worried about being punched in the face. I'm yeah. telling you, they're going to hack you to death after they make you watch them brutally rape your wife and your daughter or your son. And you think, well, that's hyperbole. That, are you insane? This is happening every day in America. Let me give you an example. I think it was two weeks ago, a man from, I think it was Honduras, illegal alien in Boston, brutally rapes seven children. <laughs> children, not, not teenagers. That's horrible enough. Children. You know what Boston does? Boston PD? They're sanctuary city. Release them. No bail, no bond. Just release them. If you and I could go on, I literally I could spend, I could tell you we're gonna go on a marathon for 24 hours, and I'm going to talk about case after case after case of murders, uh, women being raped, child molestation, pedophilia, all by the hands of illegal aliens. I mean, I can go for days with you. Mm -hmm. My point is the evil, the enemy is inside our walls, and they're here. And when you look at them, they come from war-torn nations of the continent of Africa, the Middle East, CCP, Russia, Venezuela, Honduras. They look at us and I know what they're seeing. They're seeing the same thing you just described. The fat dude with the skinny arms, his wife is disgusted with him. 
and they're looking at America. I could see it. I know it. I watch them. Yeah. They're looking at America and they're thinking and they're talking amongst themselves. Why don't we take this place? Absolutely. They're absolutely that discussion is happening right now. Why don't and and how do I know that? Well, because in the big cities, they're just taking everything. Mm -hmm. They just take everything. They go into stores, they they uh rob people, they 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 take people's cars, brutalize people's wives and children. And back to the German lady asking, where are all the German men? Mm -hmm. Same question I ask, where are all the American men? What, what, where are the rugged individualists that, that doesn't matter if you're five foot five or six foot five and 240 pounds of muscle that just are going to go, you know what? I have some of the guys that I know are five, seven, 145 pounds. I go to war with them in a second because they will cut your throat and yeah. they will smile when they do it. So it's not about size. It's about, do you have the courage to do what's necessary to keep your, your family and your country safe? And the question really is, the answer is, if I'm honest, I don't know if we have enough Americans. I yeah. Don't. Yeah. I, 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 dude, I, I completely agree with you, man. Like that, that's, that's the part that freaks me out right is because you can go on x or any other social media platform and people you know it's just an endless feed of dissent right but it's like when the time comes when they come for me what's the response going to be from people when they come for you what's the response going to be because they're going to come right so so what's where are all these people who are, you know, sitting on X all day, these supposed dissenters, where are they going to be? Are they just going to think they are? What do you think is going to happen? Let's I think nothing. Yeah, I think nothing. I think I'm going to take a few of them out and then I'm going to get taken out myself because that's the way I look at it. You know, like I'm getting really personal here, but you're my brother. So I'll talk about this. My wife asked me a few months ago if we should be worried about what I'm doing. And I said no, because I didn't want to make her afraid for our safety and our family. Um, the truth is we should be worried because the walls are closing in and people like me are going to be the target. People like you are going to be targeted. We're going to be the first ones, right? They're going to take out the big fish first. They, they already tried that with Alex Jones. Just wait. When that hammer drops, Joe Rogan, gone. And we're going to be like, what the fuck? Tucker Carlson, gone. They're just going to work their way down through the voices. They'll take the big ones first, and then they'll come for us after. And, you know, when I told my wife no, I, it was the first time that I really felt like I lied to her. Because I didn't want to tell her the truth, and I didn't want her to be afraid for our safety. But the truth is, the more these laws are passed, like in Canada, I don't know if you know, but in Australia, uh, their digital ID just passed its first reading through Parliament. In Canada, we have a digital ID uh, framework set up in our recent uh, budget. So they're coming. They're coming. Right? Like this isn't... This isn't something that we're just going, it's just going to go away because enough people pointed it out. And to your question of where are the men and what are they doing? You know, I think that they're just soft bellied, weak, and the, the time is going to come where they're going to have to make a decision. And unfortunately, I think a lot of them are going to make the decision to, to lay down and die and just accept whatever totalitarian system, totalitarian system is being forced upon them because they don't have the will to fight. And what does that mean for the fighters? I don't, I don't know. And here, here's the thing I, and I understand from a, uh, a humanistic perspective, right? You think of the government and you think of they're massive and they're powerful, but have you ever gone in and just said to yourself, whatever institution you're going into the police, libraries, you know, going to DMV, whatever, the state office, whatever. I want your guests or your audience to do one thing for me. When you go into these places, just pause, step to the side in the back, and then look at all of them. Are you afraid of any of them? Are you, individually, are you afraid of any of them? Would I be afraid of Joe Biden? 
would I be afraid of anyone in his cabinet physically, like physically one-on-one? The answer is no, Mm -hmm. zero, none, none of them. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to start pulling away the mask of this giant evil demon called the government and realize they're just filled with very, very weak men and women that have the power of the government behind them. And when you start to realize that these are weak people, there's no one with incredible high intellect or high and or high motivation, high determination. You want to talk about people that get punched in the face and run? All of them are going to run. All of them are going to run. So when I when people say to me, well, what, what does it look like if we, we have a revolution? And my first thing is I don't want a revolution because I know the moment the revolution happens, my country is never going to be the same. Mm-hmm. My country wasn't the same after the Civil War. It's never going to be the same. Now, what does a revolution look like? Is it, is it line it up and shoot and kill each other? I don't know. I don't know what it is. But you can feel it's coming. Yeah. You can feel. And here's what, here's what I always say. Anyone that thinks they're going to sit this out and wait it out, they're going to be the first ones killed. They're going to be the low-hanging fruit, and they're going to be the ones that are going to be just dismissed and destroyed immediately. Yeah. Because who are they going to come fight first? Are they going to come fight me or you or Brian O'Shea? We all have weapons. There's a better chance than not I'm going to kill you or I'm going to kill. Like when I used to get on the border and I would arrest 20 member, twenty guys just by myself at 2 o'clock in the morning, and there would be 20 of them, have them all kneel down, and they have tats all over their face, MS-13, 18th Street gang members, and I would tell them in my broken Spanish, I have 12 rounds in my gun. I There's 20 of you. You just don't know which 12 I'm going to kill. Mm-hmm. So you're going to do what I say because I have no, I will not hesitate to do whatever I have to do to get you guys hooked up and walk out here peacefully and put in, put in our jail. Okay, officer, we understand. And if we had more men like that, that were like, it didn't need, I don't need 20 million of us. What if there's a couple hundred thousand of us? Yeah. Man, you come down and you, you mess with Jason James, I'm guaranteeing you 10,000 armed men will be here and we're going to take care of business. And here's mm-hmm. the dirty, dirty secret. In the United States of America, there are 660,000, more or less, and it's dropping every day, 660,000 state, local, and federal law enforcement officers. The vast majority are conservative, and a good segment of them are gutless nothings that just are administrative pogues that have a gun and a badge, and they're worthless. Hmm. But the vast majority of those men and women are patriotic. Just as the same, the majority of the military is patriotic. Where do you think those men are going to side with? I think they're going to side with us. If they don't, then it's over. But I believe, they, I believe there's generals and colonels and sergeants and regiments and small units that would say, no way. Mm-hmm. This is unconstitutional. Because here's what, when law enforcement and in the military in the United States of America, we all are drilled. It's drilled into us. You have a moral obligation to not follow unconstitutional orders. Mm -hmm. And there's mechanisms in place to make sure that you have an an exit route. So when somebody says, JJ, you got to go in war, you got to go and kill them. No, 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 no. They're prisoners of war. I'm not killing them. No, I'm not doing it. Or JJ, you're going to go door to door in your your federal law enforcement capacity, and you're going to remove Second Amendment rights. No, I'm not. Here's the Constitution. It says right here, I am not. In fact, in my, in my Immigration Nationality Act law and in all of my teachings that I took, I, if I follow that law now, I am liable because I just broke civil rights. If more men inside the Border Patrol, DHS, FBI, state and local, would just fall back on that and say, I'm not doing it. You make me. In, 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 our, in law enforcement... The, the get out of jail card is, oh, J- Jason, you want me to do that? You're my supervisor. Uh, I need that in email or in writing, please. Well, you're never going to put that in writing because mm-hmm. I got you. So if you're not going to put it in writing, shut your mouth. I'm not doing it. Now, does that cause you to get 
demoted or not get promotion? Yes. But when are we going to stop being selfish and start saying this world that we live in is bigger than me? My country, the greatness of America is bigger than me. No. And it might cost me something. I don't know what's going to cost me. I hope it doesn't cost me my, my, my treasure. I hope it doesn't cost me my life uh, or my freedom. I hope it doesn't. But again, all the way back to the beginning where we said, I'm not going to live the rest of my life knowing I'm a coward. I, I know that I cannot live under that burden. There's no way I can because I know maybe my wife will forgive me, but she'll never look at me the same. My son will never respect me. And ultimately, I know I will never be able to forgive myself. Yeah. And that's what drives me. And I'm sure that's what drives you. Yeah. I, I The thought of being a coward has just never entered my mind. That's just not who I am. Right. And, and you're right. If I ever did back down or cower, I would, I mean, still, so it's a bit of a long story, but during the, the vaccine mandates, I ended up having to take the first dose of the Novavax vaccine because my mother-in-law was clinging to life in a coma in a hospital room and I had to get on an airplane. And even though my choice in doing that was justified because in Canada, I couldn't fly unvaccinated and it just wasn't realistic for my wife and I to go back and forth between here and Vancouver. It's 13 hour drive each way. Right. Yeah. Um, I still can't forgive myself for doing that. I still, I'm a lot of the anger that I have toward this current Canadian government, which I have a lot of anger for a lot of reasons. A lot of it, a lot of it now has to do with the fact that they violated me and they did it in a way where, you know, you, you brought up a good point, right? Like these bureaucrats, these aren't fucking Rambo. This isn't J.J. Carroll, you know, you walk into, you know, Congress and there's this giant fucking man who could manhandle you in an instant. These are pipsqueaks. These are weasels, right? These are people that if if it came down to physical competition, I don't even think I would I would I, I don't even think my heart rate would go up if I if I, if it came to it. Right. But they get but it's because of that that they get. They, they have a, a hard on for power. They love exercising their power because, because their legislative power is the only power they have over people, right? In the real world, outside of their job, you know, as a bureaucrat, they have fucking nothing. They're nobody, right? right? And so the thing that, that, that has really stuck to me or stuck with me, you know, from that period is that I let these fucking weasels win. Right. And so like, yeah. And I mean, that's the closest I think I've ever been to not, I wouldn't call it cowardice, but the closest I've ever no, been to compliance necessity. or capitulating. Right. And, and, and so that's just the, but that's just the way I'm built. And, and, you know, I'm doing this right now because of the way I'm built and I'm talking to you because of the way I'm built. Right. And I think yeah. you're the same way. And so it's like, the thing that I just keep running over in my mind is like, where are we, where are the rest of us? Just like basically what you've been asking for the last half hour. And, and if there are more of us, which I know there are, we got to figure out a way to get in touch with each other and start organizing ourselves because this, this is coming, right? This is coming. We are in the final stages now. Right. And, you know, I actually I wanted to bring this up with you because I, I was listening to Alex Jones the other day. I've been listening to him more lately um, just because he's been so on the nose and on target with so many of the things that Every he said, time. it's fucking crazy, man. Like I, I listened to Alex Jones. I turned on Alex Jones the day after nine 11 and I listened to Alex Jones for 10 years. And then he kind of went off the deep end into like, you know, aliens and reptilians and all this stuff. And I, it, for me, I was like, okay, that's too far, but I've been back listening to Alex Jones. Now they were talking about, these illegal immigrants, the, this this just constant flow of military aged men, and they're saying that there's evidence now that these that these men are UN soldiers. Um, what's your view on that? Do you think that's an accurate assessment? And and if you do, can you expand on it? I don't have any evidence that they're UN soldiers. That being said, that does not mean that it's not happening. Okay. 
So I wrote my book, Invaded, it's 18 months ago. My final, my final edit was about 16 months ago. I was making statements in that book that would make me pause as I wrote them and said, okay, I'm going to type this out, but no one's going to believe. They're going to say I'm crazy, right? So much so that my editor edit, it censored me and I had to get my rights back from my editor. Conservative public, publication. Everything that I wrote happened. Happened. But it went almost double what I, my professional estimations were. My point being, if you say to me, J.J., they're having United Nations, UN people are training these men to come in. Why, why would I dismiss that as insane? When I know from all of my experience and my time in the Border Patrol and DHS that everything that they have done, Mayorkas, Biden, everything they have done is illegal, is an intentional, strategic, and purposeful. Why would they not bring that in? And then when you look at the bigger global picture, Millions of people are from the Southern Hemisphere have poured into the Northern Western Hemisphere nations. So much so that many of the European nations have begun to flip. Their populations now become the minority. That's frightening. It's over then. It's over. And you see what's happening to America. Let me just give you some, some statistical data that now is openly discussed as what I knew for years, but they're actually now having to admit it. Over 52 million foreign nationals live in the United States of America. It's 15% of our population have no loyalty to America. I know that number to be higher. It is now already agreed upon that the United States of America has over 45 million illegal aliens. 50 to 70%, I know it's a large number, and I apologize for not being able to narrow it down even more, but DHS data is, is segmented and it's lies. 50 to 70% of everyone crossing the border are single adult military age men from 18 to 35. Why? I thought they were refugees. So let's say you, you're gonna be a refugee. Let's say that you come to America as a political refugee. Do you leave your wife and your daughter? No. No, they're right beside you. And you're like, honey and, and your daughter, you don't leave my side for anything. No. We're going to traverse into a new country, a new land. We're going to keep our head down. You listen to what dad says, and I'm going to take care of you. You don't leave them back there. No. So they're not, they're not refugees. Then what are they? Well, I, we, we, we've established that the, C, the uh, PLA, People's Liberation Army from, from Communist China, are pouring into America. It's already known. 250,000 special interest aliens, which are terrorists, have come into America and we released them. This is all only what we know. There's at least 18 million people across the border undetected and absconded. We don't, do not know. Okay, 30 million people will have crossed the United States border and be released or absconded within Joe Biden's first four years. <laughs> and they've done nothing to stop it. So... Why is this happening? I mean, that's an honest question to ask. Why is this happening? And why are all of them, the majority of them, single adult military age men? And then the final question should be, what is the manifestation? Let's say that, let's say Alex Jones is off the deep end and I'm crazy and you're crazy. Okay. They're all just middle to military age adult men in America. Okay. 20 million of them let's say, and I'm being conservative, 20 million. How does that benefit America? How does it? So you have 20 million men that are, the, at least half of them are illiterate in their own language. Majority of them never got past sixth grade or equivalent of sixth grade. They have no skills, like technical first world skills. None of their women are with them. Now the money runs out. The homeless shelters dilapidated. You can't stay there. Hotels were run out of money. America's run out of money. So I got 20 million men that can't, they have no one to have sex with. U.S. citizen women are not lining up at the, at the homeless shelters to bang the guy from Sudan. They're not. This is, let's just be honest. Yeah. 
They can't feed themselves. They have no they have no no ability to earn money. They're tired and they're hungry and they're dirty. And then they're resentful. And then they're angry. And then they want vengeance. And then they look at the men that you run by, the big, fat, obese, impotent piece of crap, and they think, he gets to have sex with her. He actually looks like he has some money. So I'm going to take his wife, and I'm going to take everything he has, including his life. That is the best case scenario. The worst case is they're, they're soldiers being trained and brought into America. It doesn't, it does, my best case scenario is disaster. My worst case scenario is the end of our nation. Yeah. Are you telling me that China and Russia and Iran and Middle Eastern nations and, and Palestinians are not conspiring to bring their people into America? None of those countries know they can go toe to toe with us because at the minimum, the best case they can get is it's a stalemate and tens of millions of their, hundreds of millions of their population gets decimated. We get decimated, they get decimated. What's the best way to kill America without having to kill any of your own people? I will just send my troops into your nation and I will destroy it. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the average Western government, the average Western male, guess what we do? We fund our own demise. We give them shelter and housing and clothing. Let me just give you, let me tell you how grotesque this is, just so your audience has an understanding of how absurd the leaders of our nation are. Let's take New York City, for example. It costs approximately $100 a day to feed an illegal alien that's living in a hotel that costs $500 a day, and they've been there for a year, over a year. I'm spending my tax dollars to feed one illegal alien, it costs me $36,000 a year. 36,000. Do you spend 36,000 on food? No. Your family? No. You and I could go to five-star hotels and, and we would never do that. Five-star restaurants. We, we couldn't spend 36,000 on food, dude. It's insanity. Mm -hmm. But we're going to give a guy from Haiti, and here's even the better part. I don't know if you've watched this. We spend $36,000 a person to feed them. And what do they do? They stormed City Hall in New York City and demanded that you give us better food. We want it culturally appropriated. And you know what that dumbass mayor, Mayor Adams, that imbecile of a human being? Yeah, we need to do that. Yeah. You know, I... in a world, we just, listen... I've had it and I've had it with beta males. I've had it with people. And I even told my wife, I said, you know what? I have never been like this, but I'm absolutely doubling down. I don't care about anyone's feelings. I don't care about if, if you are not in agreement that your nation is being destroyed, then I'm considering you an enemy. Yeah. I don't and care if you're the nicest person in the world and you're just a soft piece of trash that doesn't want to get involved. You are the enemy because you're clogging the system up. Yeah. I need you to remove yourself completely from society so that I have a very good angle or view of who my enemy is. And if I can't do that, I'm just going to clump you in with them. It sounds crazy if you and I had this discussion 10 years ago. We would be way ahead, way over our skis. We're, we would be talking about serious what ifs. You and I are not having a discussion of what ifs. We're discussing what is happening. Yeah. And people may say, well, you're just like Alex Jones. You're crazy. And my retort is a lot of what he has said has come absolutely true. <laughs> I was going to say predicted it. 9 11. Yeah. Okay, he predicted 9 11. Alex Jones Down was through, right. They're yeah. going to fly planes into the World Trade Center. Yeah. And everyone said, you are absolutely coked up out of your head. But he was right. Yeah. So when he says, how, okay, let's take, let's play this, let's play this, how absurd is this? Before 9-11, he says openly, on tape, you can go back and Tucker Carlson actually played the tape. Yeah. Planes are going to fly into the World Trade Center by, by terrorists and the government's going to say it. 
That's beyond insane. United UN UN is 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 training soldiers to come into America to take it over. Which one's more crazy? Honestly, yeah, right. Which one's more crazy? Yeah. Flying planes in the World Trade Center are going to collapse. That's insane. But it yeah. came true. So now he's telling you that UN soldiers are coming and you're scoffing at it? And you're going, oh, that guy's a nut job. Really? Really? Yeah. He's a nut job? You're a nut job? I'm a nut job? How, how's everybody that has done something with their life and been in positions within the beast are coming out and saying to you, this is happening? And, you're, and they're going, no, you're crazy. You're just trying to sell a book. You're, you're, you're crazy. I have another job. I have a full-time job. Yeah. Like my wife said, you're doing two jobs, dude. You're working 80, 90 hours a week. So I'm not doing this. To... My point is, I'm, if this was a farce, I could only take a farce so long. Yeah. Before I'm exhausted, I'm like, I'm done with this. This isn't a farce. This is the truth. And my heart goes out to you because of the position you're in. But if I'm honest, I will tell you, I'm talking to you and I am having some fear enter my heart because I know you may go before me, but they're not going to stop with you. And that border between Canada and America does not exist. Those no. ideological evil beliefs, they're going back and forth. It's just we are a little bit behind you mm -hmm. in the form of your tyranny. And we are saved because of our constitution that is being absolutely destroyed. Well, that's, so we gonna, yeah. but that's the same scenario here in Canada, right? Is that we have our own constitution and it has been completely and utterly desecrated and ignored by this government. Now, when we're there, sorry, I wanted to jump in earlier when you were talking about the illegal aliens, um, because there is an added component uh, to all this. And okay. uh, so I encourage anybody listening to this to go look up Sweden no-go zones. So Sweden has designated parts of, I believe, Stockholm and other uh, uh, places. Um, is it Stockholm? Yeah, something like that. Uh, but they've designated parts of Sweden as now no-go zones where immigrant gangs have taken over. And basically what they've said is that it is unsafe for Swedish people to travel into these parts of Sweden. Yeah. Like, to me, that's like... That again, we're talking about soft bellied, bitch ass, coward men who would let people walk into their country and just fucking take it over. But the added component here is that you're you're bringing in millions of, of military aged men into your country. Right. And not only are you uh, feeding them, housing them, um, you know basically taking care of the state, their, their wards of the state, essentially. Mm -hmm. But you're also telling them that they're special and that they're entitled to this stuff, that they deserve it. And that's the real problem, at least in my mind, is that you're telling people that are coming into your country illegally that not only do you deserve to be here, but you deserve a cer certain standard of treatment. And if you don't receive that certain standard of treatment, then it's okay to just take it. And that's where we've arrived at now. And that's why you're seeing what you're seeing in the United States and Canada actually has let in more illegal immigrants than any other country in the, on the planet in the last two years. So that's where we are now is that we're bringing people in and not only are we, are we housing them and clothing them and using our tax dollars to, 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 uh, to, well, to keep them alive, but we're also saying you deserve this. Right. Don't let anybody tell you differently. You are a victim. And as a victim, you deserve everything that we can give you. And if we can't give you what you want, then just take it. We're not going to do anything. We'll arrest you and then we'll send you back out on the street. That's the message that we're sending. And that's how Sweden ends up with no go zones. That's how New York City is fucking falling apart. Mm -hmm. Right. Because these people have have become entitled and they've been told that they are, that they are entitled to certain, a certain standard. And if we can't provide it, well, then you can just take it. Take it. And that's, well, and that's me, it. Yeah. Let me, let me just drive home that, that point that you made. And in an experience I just had in San Diego. So I went down to San Diego to begin filming my documentary going to Chicago tomorrow. I walked 
It's called the security zone between the primary fence and the Trump wall. It's a huge area, about 100 yards. We own it. We've blood spilled. We owned it. Now the illegal aliens own it. It's 100 men between continent Africa, India, and the Middle East. It was all that grouping. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. I walked right through them as they were sleeping, doing bonfires, cooking on America's soil, where I spilled my blood to keep us safe. I walked in there, and then it was the strangest feeling I got. They were not trespassing in my country. I was trespassing on theirs. And that's how we feel when they're here. They're like, no, this is mine. And if you don't feel that yet, you're, you are just willfully ignorant. I want you to go down to those inner city places if you live there. And they begin to feel as if this is not my, this is not my country. That's theirs. And they own it. You talked about Sweden. Sweden has a rape epidemic. A rape. Let me let me just say that again. I'm not making this term up. This is their words. We have a rape epidemic. Now you're telling me those great Swedes who a lot of them were Vikings and all that. Do you think their ancestors would allow the Muslim hordes from the Middle East to come up and rape their women? Mm -hmm. What kind of a man are you that you allow people to come into your country, take over everything and rape your children? and your wives, and you say nothing. You are beyond contempt. You are everything that every really alpha male hates. Mm -hmm. But we're not far from that, dude. We, we are about three years behind the, the European West. It is here, dude. Mm -hmm. We are seeing it. And our government is facilitating our demise through our tax dollars or our government, United States government, printing money and devaluing the dollar. Mm -hmm. We are being attacked on every angle and phase of American life. I just asked this last interview and I asked him, name me one entity of American life that you trust. Do you trust your faith leaders? Do you trust your healthcare do you trust the intel agencies, the FBI, law enforcement? Do you trust your politicians? Do you trust your teachers are teaching your students right, our, our kids? Name me. Do you trust the economy? Do you trust the stock market's real? Do you trust that corporate America is not gouging you? And the answer is, I don't trust any of them. And that's how America feels. How does a nation that trusts no one or any entity, how does it survive? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, it does not survive. And to cap this off, because I know you got to run. If America falls, the rest of the West goes with it. So we are, we are the domino that starts the fall. Yeah. Sweden, Sweden can disappear. Is anybody really going to, honestly, let's say they sweep through and that becomes Mogadishu. Everybody would be like, damn, Sweden was beautiful. Now it's Mogadishu. I'm not going to travel there. America falls. It's all over, people. It's all over. That's right. Who, who, who's going to protect the world? Mm -hmm. Who? France? No yeah. one. China and Russia and Iran dominate the world. Yeah. How does that look? So, hey, man, I, I, I'll come on your show anytime. Oh, JJ, yeah. You I feel like we're just getting aligned. started. Yeah. We're, we're absolutely aligned. And I, I just hang tough. If you feel like you need to leave... I think you come to America and you fight. Yeah. America. Well, I'll tell you this, man. I I'm, I'm staying till the, till the, till the, till I can't stay no more. And I think I still got at least another year or two before I have to make some tough choices. But, um, when I do go, yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll be right down there with you. Cause I, the thing is, is, you know, and this to people listening, I know this is going to sound crazy paranoid and conspiracy theorists and all this, but when the rubber meets the road, I want to be with JJ and I want to be with Brian and I want to be with the, the, the people that I know are going to fight. And there's a lot of those people in Canada too. And a scenario that I could see happening in the future is where Canadian rebels and American rebels mix together and, and we all fight together because we're all fighting the same, the same enemy. Right. And 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not there yet, but it's just, it's something that's looming over me because it's like, well, if they pass this law, then I'm just a sitting duck at that point. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And you know, the Trudeau government literally or uh, recently uh, raised the capital gains tax. They raised it by 32%. Oh my God. What so, is it now? Oh, I, I don't know the exact number off my head. I was reading it this morning that it's, it's, so it's, it's, it, they increased it, or I think they increased it to 32% or by 32%. But the point is, is that they've chased investment out of our country, right? Why, but people why? don't, why would what, you do it? What, what socialists don't understand, they always say, well, we're just going to make wealthy people pay a little more. And it's like, but you do realize that those wealthy people create all the jobs. They create the, they, 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 they create the investment that creates industry. Like it, yeah, you may, the, the idea may be, well, this, this multimillionaire deserves to pay a little bit more, but let me ask you a question. If you worked your fucking ass off and you built something that made you a hundred million dollars, would you be comfortable giving 50 million of it to people who did fucking nothing? No, 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 nobody would be. I wouldn't be if I if I invented something that helped humanity and I had to give up 50 percent of what I made off it just to help people who did nothing, who, who contributed nothing. So anyways, that's Canada. And, and that's the oh. thing is, it's like I just know that once this online harms bill passes, if it does, then I'm just a fucking sitting duck. But. JJ, I know you got to run. Uh, Brian, we already know Brian's going to be late. Fucking Brian. But um, I'm always late. <laughs> but before you go do your other show, uh, JJ, hang around for 10 seconds when we're done recording. But for now, just tell everybody where they can find you. You can find me on X at JJ Carroll 14 or go to JJCarroll.com. My book's on Amazon. And I have a new uh, documentary. It's going to come out in September, October. I'm filming it right now. It's called What is Treason? And anybody wants to help because I'm getting more and more interviews with high, higher, high and higher level people and it costs money to travel. Uh, I hate asking, but I have a give, send, go, uh, backslash, save in America. Anything you can give me or just, or just sometimes getting an email saying, hey bro, thank you. That, that, I don't know how you feel, Jason, makes no. me feel like, okay, I'm yeah. gonna keep plugging along. Yeah, no, listen, um, people support this documentary. JJ is like unbridled, unfucking filtered truth, right? And even the even if you don't agree with everything JJ says, all you have to do is turn around and Google what he said, right? Yeah. Like the, the big trick here, and this is something I want to close on because this is something that is really important. What a lot of people hear is a white guy talking about dark brown skinned people coming into the country and they automatically associate it with racism. And JJ, you will agree with me on this. This is not a race issue. This is a cultural issue. This is a cultural issue. And what we have are people who are coming into our countries representing, who are raised and represent culture, raised within and represent cultures that do not blend well with ours, right? And so that's the situation that we're in. When you, when you, when you turn that up by millions of people, mm -hmm. these are the scenarios that follow. So you have to take your mind out of the race issue and put it in the cultural issue because the cultural issue is the one that we're talking about here. And JJ, I fucking love you, brother. I love everything you represent. As soon as we're done here, I'm going to go put some money in that gives and go. And um, everybody watch the documentary. JJ, I'll have you back ASAP because I feel like we just started talking. Um, so great. we'll have you back before the documentary. But for now, my brother, thank you so much for your time again today, man. It's always it's always great to see you, and, and I'll be in my tuxedo next time. So, all right, thank you. All right, Appreciate my brother. Love you. Take care. <laughs>